All right, this is gonna be episode five and a half in the video series of the Cold Climate 18650 test because I'm not quite sure where this video is gonna go. All right, so the reason this is gonna be five and a half is because I don't know exactly where this video is gonna go, but it does relate to the cold climate test packs that I plan to do as soon as I possibly can. All right, so the original intention for this video, which would have been video six, would have been revealing the capacity test from the antimatter for all four packs. And it didn't quite go as planned. Let me tell you why. All right, so just like I said in the last video, episode five, after I was done filming that, I was gonna start capacity testing all four packs. And just like you do for any other battery that you test on all the other little charges over here, the first thing you do is charge the battery up to 4.2 volts and I did that no problem and then after the last pack was done I immediately started doing the discharge capacity test then about 30 minutes into the test I get a connection breakdown which has happened many times so if you aren't familiar with these antimatter chargers they well the newer versions I don't know about the older versions they have a problem it's like this Houston you have a problem problem and the problem is is after they discharge a big pack like these because I don't know if it's technically intended for big packs like these after you start doing a discharge test you end up blowing capacitors or some other random part on the inside. So in a previous video, I replaced the two capacitors that burnt up and there was also a trace that was burnt and I fixed that. And everything seemed to go pretty good after that. I did occasionally still get the connection breakdown. I don't know, it was summertime, maybe it was too hot. I'm not exactly sure. So anyway, got the connection breakdown again, which sucks because I really wanna capacity test these so we have something to compare by at the end of winter or if the battery packs just quit working. You know, I just want something to go by. I mean, technically we can go up. Whoops. I was gonna show that to you in just a second and I just broke it. Technically we could go up with the amp hour that I added up with all the cells, which we might have to do, but you know, I wanted something else to, I guess, go by. So after the connection breakdown issue, I hit the recharge button and it recharges no problem. So my next thought would be, well, why can't I just add more cooling? So that's what I did. I found a five volt laptop fan, hooked it up to a five volt phone charger, and then set that fan into this weird phone holder contraption thing. Turned it on, hit the discharge button at 15 amps, and away we went. It seemed to be going swimmingly. And then at about 31 minutes into the test, I started letting out the magic, yeah, you would think it would be magic smoke, but this time it was the magic stink. You know that nasty electrical smell? Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. I'm guessing I didn't technically let out the magic smoke is because they had that little mini laptop squirrel cage fan just screaming away, cooling it down as fast as humanly possible, and uh, decided to shut it down because I didn't want it to blow up or anything like that. So that's where I'm at. This is what the setup looked like. The antimatter charger here, the 5 volt laptop squirrel cage fan there, phone charger here, air blowing in as much as I possibly could right there, and yeah, just nothing quite worked out. But I will tell you, this thing puts out quite a bit of air, so if we do manage to get this going again, I am going to repeat this process right here. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, during the recharging of the packs, before I did any discharge testing or anything like that, I decided I would attempt to repair or fix or do whatever I had to do to to HB Powerwall's broken antimatter charger that he sent me. He also sent a couple brand new capacitors so I could eventually change mine out, but of course I haven't gotten to that part yet. And during that repair, I used the brand new TS-80 that Banggood <laughs> sent out and that worked out actually pretty awesome. It did a lot better than I thought. I found a loose capacitor, which could have technically became loose in transit because it was just a box of parts when I got it. I found the same burnt out trace, so I also fixed that. And he also cut off the positive and negative input wires. I'm guessing because they're kind of okay wires. I can understand that. So I replaced those as well. Got it back together, turned it on, and the little display was just flashing. So I didn't really do anything except for waste a bunch of time on that as well. So I 
took it apart one more time and kind of looked around a little bit. I didn't see anything messed up or anything like that. Put it back together one more time and this time I didn't hook up the fan and then once I turned it on the display stayed on. It wasn't flashing or anything like that so then I hooked the fan up and the fan started type of thing. It wasn't fully spinning or anything like that and every time it did the the screen would flash so yeah I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with that so that was a huge fail as well so I guess the real question is do we want to go off the calculated capacity that I have on the packs already they're all around the 158 amp hour mark and then at the end of winter I could retest all the cells which I already plan to do and whatever the cells turn out to be I could add those up and then we could kind of compare those numbers or I could go on eBay and try to get one of those little discharger things. I think HP Powerwall has had one or two of these in the past. I don't know how great they were, but I did see on eBay there are some in the United States, so I might be able to get that kind of soon, and they're pretty cheap. I could probably get maybe like two of them. Leave my antimatter alone because it does charge, or I could possibly get the same eye charger that HP Powerwall, you're just getting a couple extra mentions in here because you sent out me the antimatter charger. You've also tried these dischargers, and you've also had really good luck with that little tiny charger that you got and it will do 30 amp discharge which is amazing and I think you've done quite a few on there so far depending on how much one of those are I might order one of those so if it's over like a hundred bucks I'm not gonna order it I'm gonna go the cheap route and get just those dischargers and we're just gonna have to go with that I don't know let me know in the comment section down below and now that I'm thinking about it, you know what I think I'm gonna do? We're gonna take my antimatter charger apart, see if we can't find anything broken, blown up, or whatever. See if I have any parts to replace those, if there's anything bad in there. And if I don't have anything on hand to fix that, we're gonna take apart HP Powerwall's antimatter charger, and possibly, if the parts are good, remove them from his, put it on mine, and hope that it works. All right, so that's the plan for the rest of this video. Like I said, I wasn't exactly sure where this is gonna go I still don't so if you are done watching the video I will see you on the next one if you want to continue watching let's see where this goes and again I will also use that TS 80 for as much as I possibly can and if that doesn't do it then I am going to use my Hakko 926 ESD the only reason I would use that is because it gets hotter and I've got the finer point tip on it the TS 80 that I have is more of the chisel tip so if I need to get into like a smaller area or something like that that's where that'll come in. And if you are really, really interested, at the end of this video, I might put in the HP Powerwall's antimatter charger repair. That didn't quite work. At the end of the video, just in case anybody wants to see that as well. Ah! Oh. Alrighty, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this and sorry for the shakiness, but the previous shoddy repair of the capacitor, you can see it kind of bulged out on the end there and it appears to have some black marks on there. I don't know if that's a marker mark or if it actually leaked out. I'm guessing it probably leaked. And the other capacitor that I replaced also has swollen up a little bit and has also leaked. So we are going to replace both of these capacitors again. And I'll also take the bottom plate and the heat sink off so we can kind of take a look back there to see if there's anything else broken because this piece right here, it does have some markings on it. So hopefully that guy is still good, but we'll take a closer look here in just a minute. All right, so whatever that thing is, it does look pretty good. It just has that little marking right there. I think I'm just gonna leave it for now. And this side, you can see the previous fix of the trace where it blew itself up. So that guy appears to still be good. So I think the only thing we're gonna do is replace these two capacitors. Oh look, that thing even split itself open. Look at that. Huh. 
Now again, these were used from other circuit boards and whatnot, but this one's a Daewoo 1000 microfarad, and I believe they're 50 volt. This one was another from some other circuit board. I don't remember exactly the specs on it, but we'll take a look once we get it off. Alrighty, so it appears that I just have two bad capacitors. So I'm gonna be replacing these with 100 volt capacitors. Ready for me to murder your name? Namawitz. Nam Namawitz. It's probably way off. But a huge shout out to JC Namawitz. He sent me out some brand spanking new 100 volt capacitors. This is the 1000 microfarad. And the little guy is a 220 microfarad capacitor, and that one's also 100 volt. Now the reason he sent these out to me, because he also got an antimatter and an anticipation. Anticipation? Constipation? From everybody else's antimatter blowing up, I had said that every time I replace a capacitor and I go up in voltage, pretty much double it or just higher than what is already in there, I always have better luck. I hope that works for this one, but I guess we really won't know until we replace them. And hopefully I can put the capacitors kind of more in their original location so I can kind of get away from all the heat resistors and all that kind of stuff because I think that was part of this issue is I tried to relocate the capacitors in a different spot to help with cooling, but I think I just made it worse because yeah. My bad. Let's try it again. And yes, I do need a proper set of helping hands. All right, these are called Chang X, and they are minus 40 to 105 C. And these are the 1000 microfarad at 100 volt. Kinda like that location. I'm gonna bend it off to the side a little bit to keep it away from these resistors as much as I can. I think that's gonna work. Alrighty, we're all done. So this is the connection we just did. This one right here. And then there's one right here. 
and then one right here. And this is what we ended up on this side. I kind of tilted this one away from the resistors. This one, I can't really do that too much. I mean, I could bend it just a little bit, but I think I'm just gonna leave that one there. So this is what we came up with on this side, which hopefully will work out. Okie dokie, two capacitors replaced. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is throw it together real quick and turn it on and hope that it works. Oh, I shouldn't hook that up quite yet, huh? Should make sure it turns on first. All right, I'm gonna leave it on this view just in case it does blow up. Oh, well, maybe I'll zoom in a little more. All right, moment of truth. Here goes nothing. Come on, tech. Um, and, uh, uh, so I, uh, um, and... Uh...